Surrounding me on this bench is 1,000 disassembled marking knives, consisting of 1,000 internal assemblies, 500 brass ferrules, 400 steel ferrules, 100 bronze ferrules, and behind me we've got one very disorganized, unprepared individual. I think this is gonna take a while. Step one is feral assembly, and this was easy. All I had to do was pop these two pins into the two halves of the blade holder, then slot the ferrule over them. But it turns out this thinking was slightly flawed. Come on. What? How do you even... Ah. Ah. Oh. Have I just bought the wrong size or something? As you can see, this is extremely fiddly and it turns out the pins need to be compressed slightly. So basically there is no chance I'm getting these in by hand. I need some force. So I did a bit of research and it turns out there is a piece of equipment that does this for you called a pin press. Trouble is, I've got no idea how they work and if they'd even be suitable for my needs. However, upon receiving a quote for £2,000 for a press that seemed to fit the bill, I decided to revert to more primitive methods. Oh, go on. Oh, it works. Sweet. So after a bit of thinking, I knocked together a jig that would hold the two halves together in the vise and allow me to place a small anvil underneath the tang, thus leaving my two hands free to get to work. That sucked. <laughs> but hammering 2,000 pins was only the beginning of the ferrule assembly. Next, all the components needed to be degreased prior to adhering the ferrule into position. So it turns out there was a design oversight with these ferrules resulting in two small holes that lead directly into the blade slot. These are a massive problem because it would allow epoxy to flood into the slot when attaching the handle, thus preventing the blade from going in. So prior to moving on to the next step, these also needed to be sealed before moving on to step two, which is preparing the blanks. Fortunately, I still had stock remaining from previous batches, so much of this stage was already complete. It was mostly the new materials I had on offer that needed to be prepped. These were sliced oversize on the bandsaw before being mounted on the lathe to cut the mortise for the tang. Of course, due to the finite number of clamps at my disposal, I was only able to glue up a maximum of 33 blanks at a time. So while I had a batch drying, I began rough shaping the handles on the lathe. Back when I began making these knives, they took me seven minutes to turn per handle, and I still was unable to get them consistent. Whereas now, I've got it down to two minutes per handle. All of this shaping is done by eye, with the exception of the length, which is indicated by the tape on the tool rest. Unfortunately, speed was not possible with some of the woods, and much care needed to be taken. Damn it. This is why Massa Birch is so expensive. But of course, with Massa Birch, the effort tends to pay off in the end. Look at this. In addition to tear out, I got my fair share of exploding blanks along the way. Well, that was a fun way to end things. <laughs> and of course, the fan favourite catches. Oopsie daisy. I also managed to take a nice old chunk out of my collet chuck as well. I also had two visitors to the workshop throughout this process, one of which was my friend Ivan, who decided to take on the challenge of turning these as fast as me. Awesome. One minute fifty. <laughs> and the second was this little guy. I've got a mouse. Oh, no 
did it. Anyway, the turning took an extremely long time to get complete. However, now we move on to the most time intensive part of the process, sanding. Oh, I don't want to do this. I make no compromises when it comes to this stage and users of my knives often compliment how well they're finished. Every single knife has to be sanded to 600 grit with no tear out, no horizontal scratches and a seamless transition to the ferrule. If a handle doesn't match this criteria, even for the smallest blemish, they're sold on my website as B-Stock that gets sold at a discount. If I really screw up and the handle is unsavable, I'll just snap it off. Ugh. I know it's brutal, but it's better to waste just the wood than the entire thing. Yep. This stage not only takes the longest, but it also comes with a fair bit of personal baggage. When I made the last batch of knives, despite wearing a respirator, I had an awful reaction to somehow breathing in dust from one of the woods. Putting in the, uh, the weekend shift today after one of these, me up this week. Then I followed that up by minorly poisoning myself with fumes from the first layer of finish, which happens to be the next step. Right, let's not have a repeat of last time. So I build up the finish of this knife using three different products, all of which have a specific purpose to both protect and enhance the knife. The first is a hand wiped cellulose sanding sealer layer, which is forced into the grain, both allowing it to penetrate the wood and leave a thin protective film over the top. Then once that's done, the knives are remounted onto the lathe for the second layer of finish, which is friction polish. Friction polish itself isn't the most hard wearing finish out there as it's mainly shellac based, but what it does do is give my knives their signature shine. Shiny. Ooh. But there's still a few steps remaining between now and applying the third and final coat because by this point the ferrule tends to look a bit of a mess and needs to be cleaned and buffed. When I used to work at Axminster back in the day, I used to sell this exact machine and we used to explicitly say to tradespeople, the craft and hobby machines, these red ones, are not for trade purposes. This is why. Because you could fry an egg on that. <laughs> it's so hot. Next is the thumb hold, which is done on the spindle sander. But to speed things up, I decided to make a little investment. Yep, I bought a second spindle sander to put a finer grit on and once again I cheaped out and bought a hobby machine and instantly noticed that it was struggling with the size of spindle I mounted onto it. Yeah, that doesn't sound healthy. But never mind, it will get me through this job and maybe one more. The reason this is cut after applying friction polish is because a thumb hold spinning at 3,500 RPM on the lathe is slightly dangerous and having it pre-cut also makes it difficult to mask off the handle prior to polishing. This made removing the remaining scratches so much easier as all that was required was light circular motions with 240 grit sandpaper. Once this was done, I moved on to the third and final layer of finish, microcrystalline wax. This is a perfect top layer for the handle as its high melting point prevents fingerprints and it can also be applied over the ferrule to prevent tarnishing. Of course, for me, it didn't stop there. I still had hours of testing each and every knife, taking photos of the new materials and editing those photos, and then getting them uploaded to the website. But I don't need to bore you with all that because all you need to know is where you can get them. Well, as of now, you can go to mattesley.com forward slash shop to purchase your very own custom marking knife. If you miss out, don't worry, I've still got all of these ferrules to get through and this entire box of unturned blanks, so the next batch will be out very soon. If you want to be notified on this, simply sign up to my mailing list in the description below. But saying all that, it's very unlikely I'll be doing a batch this big again because that near enough ruined me. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to press the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you... Ah, oh, I'll see you in the new workshop. <laughs>